MRI breast screening is a recommended secondary screening method for high-risk women in addition to mammography. MRI-guided breast biopsy is a minimally invasive option for diagnosing the clinical outcome of suspect lesions identified by MRI. The Suros ATEX Sapphire and ATEX Emerald breast biopsy systems are designed for this procedure. Both systems are compatible with most magnets, breast coils, and targeting software. In this video presentation, we will demonstrate the GRID method using a manual targeting technique. The standard ATEC MRI handpiece is used during the procedure. Once the patient arrives in the MRI suite, an IV is started to facilitate the injection of the contrast agent to aid in visualization of suspect tissue. The patient should be reminded of the importance of remaining still during the procedure. Clean the patient's breast and position in the breast coil with enough compression to immobilize the breast. Be sure the breast tissue protrudes through the immobilization plate. The skin surface should be taut in the grid space and clearly protruding. Without visibility of the plate over the area of interest, the lesion cannot be targeted. To determine target coordinates using manual calculations, a fiducial is placed into a grid space to use as a reference point before the physician begins the first scan. It is important that the fiducial is in contact with the skin surface. Record the location of the fiducial in the appropriate grid space on the grid worksheet in the patient view and in the corresponding numbered grid space in the image view. Once the orientation is documented, shuttle the patient into the bore of the magnet for the first sequence of images. Perform a localizing scan in the sagittal view to confirm that the area of interest is located within the area that is compressed and ensure visibility of the fiducial. Administer the contrast agent and begin the scanning sequence. The manual targeting method requires a sagittal sequence. Review the images and scroll to the image containing the visible lesion. Place a marking cursor over the lesion on the monitor. Record the image left or right value from the center of the magnet on the grid worksheet in the space marked Depth of Target. Scroll back through the images to the compression grid image and record this image left or right value on the grid worksheet in the space marked Depth of Distal Grid Face. Subtract the difference between the depth of target and the depth of distal grid face. Record this measurement as the effective depth of target on the grid worksheet. You now have the Z depth for biopsy. On the compression grid image, locate the marking cursor for the lesion. Compare its relationship to the location of the fiducial by counting the grid squares from the fiducial to the lesion. Mark the lesion target in the appropriate grid space on the image view of the grid worksheet. Then, looking at the nine-hole needle guide image located next to the grid graphic, select a lettered hole that corresponds to the location of the lesion. This will identify the point of entry into the breast. After you have calculated this information in the image view of the grid worksheet, transfer the data to the grid and needle guide graphics on the patient view side of the grid worksheet. You now have the X and Y coordinates. With the X, Y, and Z coordinates calculated, you are ready to begin the biopsy process. Shuttle the patient out of the magnet. Using a sterile cleanser, swab the breast at the target biopsy site. Inject an anesthetic at the area of interest. Looking at the compressed breast in the grid, match the location marked on the grid worksheet to the actual compression grid square. Insert the nine-hole needle guide in the appropriate grid space based on the targeted calculation. Remove the remaining contents of the introducer localization set. Place the introducer stylet into the introducer sheath. Adjust the depth stop on the introducer sheath to the calculated depth of target, reading the depth from the side distal to the patient. Place the introducer sheath and stylet into the selected location of the needle guide. Holding the sheath in place, use a continuous clockwise rotating motion to advance the stylet into the breast. 
This motion will help minimize tenting of the skin. Continue advancing until the depth stop is flush with the needle guide in the grid. While continuing to hold the introducer sheath in place, remove the stylet. Place the localizing obturator into the introducer sheath. Make sure that all instruments placed into the introducer sheath are inserted completely, hub to hub. Ensure a side arm of the introducer sheath is tucked in near the grid to avoid catching on the magnet. Shuttle the patient back into the magnet. Acquire images in the sagittal and axial views to verify target accuracy. The localizing obturator will project as a signal void, appearing as a black dot on the sagittal image and as a black line on the axial image. The tip of the obturator will coincide with the center of the aperture of the biopsy needle. Once the target has been verified, shuttle the patient out of the magnet bore and proceed with the biopsy. Turn the ATEC console on and take the MRI-compatible handpiece and foot switch into the MRI suite. The ATEC MRI handpiece is equipped with 20-foot tubing to allow the physician to easily perform the biopsy while maintaining patient safety with the console located just outside of the MRI suite. Remove the localizing obturator from the introducer sheath. Place the ATEC MRI handpiece into the introducer sheath on the desired starting clock position indicated by the numbers on the handpiece. The flat portion of the handpiece correlates to the cutting aperture. With this surface facing up, your needle will be at the 12 o'clock position. Core samples can be taken at any clock position depending on the location of the area of interest. Depress the foot switch to activate the biopsy system and continue to hold the foot switch down throughout the tissue acquisition sequence. Tissue acquisition occurs every 4.5 seconds. A beep indicates the end of one cutting cycle. Manual rotation of the handpiece occurs just after the beep during the resting phase of the biopsy cycle. The ATEC handpiece acquires tissue samples until the foot switch is released when all necessary core samples have been retrieved. After tissue acquisition is complete, switch the console to lavage mode by pressing the button marked lavage. Lavage continuously irrigates and aspirates the biopsy cavity, allowing loose tissue and other fluids to be cleared from the biopsy site. Lavage the cavity until the fluid collected in the tissue collection chamber indicates the cavity is clear. Switch the console back to biopsy mode by pressing the button marked biopsy. Remove the ATEC handpiece while leaving the introducer sheath in place. To verify the successful biopsy of the area of interest, reinsert the localizing obturator back into the introducer sheath. Shuttle the patient back into the magnet for post-biopsy sagittal and axial image sequences. You are now ready to place a biopsy site marker. The ATEC Trimark Biopsy Site Identifier will be used for this demonstration. Remove the localizing obturator and place the marker deployment device into the introducer sheath until the aperture indicator contacts the introducer sheath hub. To make sure this position is maintained throughout the deployment of the marker, Hold the device in place with your free hand. Deploy the marker by pressing the plunger with your thumb. An audible and tactile click will confirm deployment. Slowly remove the deployment device from the introducer sheath. Shuttle the patient into the magnet for verification of marker placement. Once the marker placement has been verified, shuttle the patient back out of the magnet. Gently remove the introducer sheath from the breast and grid. Slowly decompress the breast and remove the compression grid. Immediately apply pressure to the biopsy site and when ready, assist the patient out of the coil. The cores can now be retrieved from the filter chamber at the back of the handpiece. Place one hand on the handpiece and the other on the filter chamber and rotate the filter chamber counterclockwise to disengage from the handpiece. Grasp the thin metal wire spatula in the tissue filter. Before pulling up on the wire, tilt the tissue filter basket toward the specimen collection dish. 
appropriately dispose of all used ATEC product, such as handpiece, marker deployment device, canister, etc.